Jane, thank you. And we know it is almost time to go back to school for a lot of families. And the adolescent in your life may be experiencing some anxiety about swapping out the sunscreen for their school books. Our next live guest has done extensive research on adolescent mental health and is here to share some tips for all of us as the school year approaches. Let's say good morning now to Michael Lynn Jensen joining us live. She is an assi assistant professor of psychology at UNC Greensboro. It is so great to have you. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So the first question is, how common is it that you hear about this back to school anxiety amongst teenagers? Is it pretty common? It's pretty common. I mean, about 14% of adolescents um, experience a clinical anxiety disorder at some point. And then far more than that, um, experience more transient periods of anxiety or worry around especially stressful transitions. Um, and back to school is definitely one of those potentially stressful transition periods for kids. Yeah, kind of like an anticipation of, you know, the summer winding down and then you kind of know it's hanging over your head. So is starting a conversation important? How can parents and guardians support this transition for teens? Yeah, so I definitely think the most important thing is to talk to your kid and find out how they're feeling. Um, are they excited? Are they nervous? Probably a little bit of both. A great way to do that is to ask open-ended questions about how they're feeling about back to school and then validate whatever kinds of feelings that they're having. And Michael Lynn, how does social media play a role? How have you kind of noticed in your line of work this social media technology world has certainly evolved. How has it either helped or hurt the relationship with social media that kids should have and always making sure it's healthy? Right, so social media is um, ubiquitous. Most kids are on social media. Teens nowadays um, have smartphones. And I'll say that um, technology and social media can either help or hinder um, transitions mm -hmm. like back to school. So for instance, it can be helpful. Um, online communities and social media can provide a great place for teens to see that they're not alone, that others are having experiences that are similar to them, um, that their friends are also maybe a little nervous, um, and honestly for building a pretty supportive community online and offline. Um, it can also serve as a mean for avoidance or distraction of things that are worrying them. So for instance, if when you're chatting with your teen, you find that they're going to social media, um, or to their smartphone to avoid thinking about or confronting or approaching something that makes them anxious like back to school, that could be a spot where we would want to redirect them um, to not use it in quite that way and instead to be using it um, as a tool to communicate, say, with friends who are also headed back to school and that could perhaps be a special place. So when I talk to parents about technology, I often talk to them about this important balance of maximizing the benefits while minimizing the risks. Okay, and there isn't a recipe that's the same for every family, right? These conversations look different depending on the need of their child. And in your research with adolescent mental health, what do you find um, the most common emotion is when children are thinking about being back in the classroom after a summer of, quote, free time or vacation? Um, I mean, I'm perhaps nervous or excited apprehension is a good way to talk about it. Um, we all have a hard time transitioning from one thing to another. We get into our summer routines and um, switching out of those can be challenging. I will say that I think um, since the onset of COVID, many young people had a longer break than they were used to um, in terms of teenagers and so that might have made for a more difficult transition. At this point, this school year, most teens have been back in the classroom. And so I think that'll help hopefully make this one perhaps a little less challenging than last year. Um, but yeah, so it's usually mixed emotions. <laughs> and so I think most teens have at least something that they like about school, whether that be the actual um, academic subjects, curriculum, time with friends, extracurricular activities like sports or clubs. And so I do find that parents encouraging their teens to think about those parts of school that they do enjoy and that they have enjoyed in the past can really help refocus their attention on the parts of school that they find rewarding and engaging and um, remind them that it, the parts of it that are making them nervous, say um, tackling a new academic subject that they are not as um, prepared for in the past, um, seem more manageable and like something they can do. Okay. Michael Lynn, it has been great to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us. And folks at home can read more of her research by visiting the UNCG Psychology website.